No, no, no. We're we're, we're just gonna keep raising. How? Well, we're we're on already. I got nothing. I. It's, okay, everyone. Hi. Uh, welcome to the TV show. Uh, I'm. I'm starting the show a little low energy because, my my soul has just been crushed, with the realization that our sole audience member, whom I thought was like me, an old guy, uh, is not in fact an old guy. Uh, he's just he's just aged beyond his actual years. I mean, he he looks like an old guy, so I guess that's not good for him. Uh, I might explain why I've never seen him dating, because all the women his age are like, I don't want to date someone that could be my father, and all the people that are the age of his father are like you. You don't even know anything about the Dukes of Hazard. How can I date you? Uh, I guess is is my point. Uh, well, it's it's June. Uh, we didn't tape in May because uh, May was busy uh, with a whole bunch of things. Um, big things in May. Uh, first weekend in May, uh, which would have been just after we didn't tape the TV show. Uh, I had my big bike ride up in Napa, the one I do every year for charity, uh, and I did not die this year. Uh, as you recall, last year, uh, halfway through, took a tumble, rolled a ways down a hill. Uh, I don't think I actually nearly died, but I tell everyone I nearly died to make it more authentic or something. And then I show them the video, uh, and it's it's a lovely video. It's it's from the front of my it's from a camera mounted on my bike, and it's you're like, oh, this is beautiful. You're you're zooming back and forth on the road. You're going downhill. Uh, and then there's this one point when I go right past a mailbox, and I've seen the video enough to know that it's it's half a second after that mailbox when it happens. And so I can always turn my head to catch the face of the person looking at this video at that exact instant. And everyone watching this video at that point goes, because uh, it's, it's suddenly terrifying. It has gone from a beautiful bike ride video to... Uh, how long were you in the hospital type question. And then I'm like, uh, my wrist hurt, my wrist swelled up, and it, I got some x-rays. Nothing bad happened. Put some ice on it, took it away after a week. Uh, I wore a brace for about a week, and then I was OK. Uh, and now I'm terrified of that one exact hill in Napa, which I cannot bike on. Like other hills I'm OK with, this one hill is going to kill me. Uh, and if I ever bike past that mailbox, I'm just going to be like, Argh. anyway, uh, that wasn't what I was going to talk. Oh, so we, I did the bike ride. I didn't die. Uh, everyone I know that contributed money. Thank you again. Um, uh, and then we had other stuff in May. Uh, and here we are. It's June. We're taping the show. Uh, first thing I want to mention, just in case this works, I haven't tried it before. Uh, I lost my wallet a week ago. Roughly, if anyone's seen it, let me know. Um, I know I had it Thursday night. I paid for stuff at Walgreens. I know I had it Friday at lunch because I paid for a sandwich at the falafel place. I don't know when I had it or if I had it after that. People at the falafel place don't have it. I asked. Uh, no one has charged anything on my credit cards. So either... Someone found it and just threw it away and took my 300 bucks out, or they're a dumb thief and they're waiting. And they're like, I don't, we don't know what the zip code is, for God's sakes. <sighs> but if, you, if you've seen my wallet, uh, let me know, because I need to start the process of calling like all my credit card companies and going, remember I called you two months ago, told you I lost my wallet, and now here it is two months later, I've lost it again. Even though, as it turns out, two months ago, I didn't lose my wallet. Uh, I misplaced my wallet. And then I called all of you people. And then two hours later, I found it, which is why we have made it this far 
without me calling everyone to tell them I lost things. Because I just keep thinking the moment I call you and say, please send me a new Amex card, I'm going to find the wallet, and then there'll be the Amex card in it, and it's totally useless at that point. I just have to drop it in the shredder and call everyone and give them a new credit. Remember, I a new credit card number. Because... Um, I don't like to have to look up a credit card number, so I just memorize it so I can type it into web forms when I buy shit, which I do a lot. I buy a lot of stuff on the on the internet, people. You knew that. Um, so that's the lost wallet story. Uh, uh, um, uh, also, I wanted to mention this. I bought one of them fidget cubes because uh, it's trendy, and I do trendy things. Although I bought it on Kickstarter like nine months ago, and I finally got it. So I don't know if fidget cubes were past being cool nine months ago when I bought it. Uh, but by now, they have passed being cool. Now they're just annoying little things that kids have that everyone hates. Uh, and I got it because I was like, hey, maybe you won't bite your fingernails as much if you have one of these things. And it's true. When I am doing like this, when I'm just sitting there going, I'm not biting my fingernails. Uh, but then eventually I have to set this down. And then I'm back. Uh, that cute. I got black because I figured that'd be easier to lose. Um, uh, other stuff. Uh, another thing in May, uh, this is another reason I was busy. Uh, in May, Santa Clara has a week uh, in the city every year when you can just throw crap out on the, on the curbs and then they come and take it away. Uh, it's like magical. You don't have to throw it in your little trash can and pray it's not too big. You just put a lot of stuff out. Uh, and I always have these grand ideas. Like I'm, I'm going to take the, the month or six weeks before cleanup. I'm going to go through my house. I'm going to pick all the stuff I don't need anymore. And I'm going to stage it in the garage so I can get rid of it all in one big fell swoop. I can make my house clean again, make it spartan, make it not full of junk. Uh, and once again, that did not happen. Um, instead, you know, like I just kept, building up and I was like, I need to get to some cleaning, need to get to some cleaning, need to get some stuff out of the garage. Uh, and then really those last like three days before cleanup week started, suddenly I was panicked and I was just madly run through my house going, I don't need that anymore. Let me throw it in the street and see if anyone wants it. Um, and so I, unlike years past when I always thought I'll get rid of some stuff, I actually managed to get rid of some stuff this year. So my house is marginally less full of crap, although I have started to fill in. So I'm doomed, apparently. Um, one of the big thing, one of the other things we did is we, uh, this was a wet winter, it was a rainy winter. Uh, I have a 70 foot redwood tree in my tiny backyard, which when it is rainy and windy, likes to drop branches. Uh, and so, and then I'm terrible about raking my backyard to get rid of all the crap that's fallen. Uh, so as it turns out, my entire tiny backyard was about three feet deep in redwood needles and branches and stuff. Uh, and so it took me like a good two hours of, of raking stuff to get this huge pile of, of tree detritus out to the curb. And it was this long... It kind of looked like a redwood tree had just tipped over and died on the curb, just in this one little spot that was kind of long. Uh, and then I kept putting all my other garbage out next to it. Not garbage, it's valuable stuff, people. It was valuable stuff I was willing to give away to the trash guy. Um, now everyone, in that week, you put stuff out. Uh, and then there are people driving around. And they, they want to pick it up because their house isn't full of crap like mine. Uh, and I'm always... I always like to notice what gets taken, what doesn't get taken. Like uh, a couple years ago, I saw someone put out a full toilet on the curb. And then like two hours later, I was walking past and someone had taken just the lid. I was like, well, that kind of makes sense because you, you can break the lid on your toilet and then you need a new lid. And so you, you're like, hey, you're, let's go get the lid from that toilet will replace the broken one we got. And then, like two years later, I saw another toilet out in the curb. And then, like a day or two later, 
I came back and the lid was there and the, the tank of the toilet was there. Someone had just taken the bottom half, which, which, was, which was complicated because you, you, you have to unscrew those. Like someone stood on the side of the street like trying to unscrew these huge tank bolts so they could take the bottom dirtiest half of it. It was not a clean toilet. Like the person that threw this toilet away did not have their, did not scrub it first. So I, I kind of wonder about that. Uh, it makes me question people's, years and years and years ago, I had a, I had a uh, PC that I'd been given to work on some stuff. And then I finished the stuff and I was like, do you want the PC back? And they're like, yeah, we'll send someone by to get it. And then like three years later, I was like, do you want the PC back? And they're like, no, we don't. We, we, we should have sent someone to get it three years ago, but we didn't. Now you can keep it. So I was like, okay. And then it just sat in, on the floor of my computer room for another five or six years because I did not need an IBM PC. They had given me this one to work on this thing, and I did it. And then finally, I like tripped over it, and I was like, that's going. That's going away. And then you know, two months later, I carried it out to the curb. I set it down. I went back into the house. I carried out the crappy little 12-inch monitor that was there. And I went, and I set the monitor, and I was like, what? I looked down, and someone in the 10 minutes it had taken me to walk back into, probably less than 10 minutes, probably five minutes it took me to walk back to my house upstairs, grab the monitor, some other things, walk down. Someone had already driven by, opened up the IBM PC, and taken out the hard drive, leaving everything else there, just in, and I was like, well, I hope you want a crappy copy of Windows something, because I reformatted it before, so you get no people's secret checking account numbers. Spring cleanup. Um, here's something else. Uh, this, this is very recent in my life. Um, I apparently have reached that stage uh, of, of life when people I used to work with, or people I work with, are retiring in droves. Um, there have been two this week alone. Uh, there was like one three weeks ago and one the month before that of people who I worked with or have been working with for the last 20 years that have decided I ain't going to work no more. I'm done with it. Uh, and now, apparently, what I have to look forward to is uh, an unending stream. So let's look at this camera. Look. Of uh, retirement photos on Facebook, uh, followed by a long set of, look how great my retirement is. Like my friend Tim retired years and years ago. Now he moved to North Carolina. And all he posts on his Facebook page is, like, here's the thing I did in my shop, because now I get to work on wood all day long if I want to, or not. Or here's what I lasered with my laser engraver that I bought, because I'm retired and can do that kind of thing. And then, like, my friend Jerry was like, now I, I moved to Indiana, and now I bought a tractor and bought a house, and I go jogging in the woods every day. And I'm like, I hate you people. I hate all of you. Uh, I'm not sure why I hate you, but I do. Um, when I see people post this on their Facebook page, I inevitably go to the comments, and I go, tab, tap, get a job, hippie, exclamation point. Because uh, that's what you got to tell these people. They're supposed to be working. Uh, uh, Brian retired yesterday. Brian, I've worked with Brian for 25 years. He's, uh, who knows what he's going to do? <sighs> Those people retiring. Uh, here's, here's another corollary to that. I'm told that in like 20 years, it stops being people retiring and it starts being people dying, which is you have to get the newspaper so you can read the obituaries and see who you used to know that's dead. Uh, and I don't, I don't get the newspaper currently. Uh, I stopped getting it because I was tired of getting up every morning and going down and getting the paper and then walking back in the garage and just pitching it straight into recycling because I was not going to have time to read it. 
Um, I used to take it upstairs to the bathroom where it would pile up in the little newspaper thing, unread. And eventually I was like, I don't need to pay for this. I get my news from the internet. Um, but when I was doing that, one day I'm thumbing through the, the section B where the editorials are, and next to them is the obituaries. And I look over, there's a big smiling picture of my dermatologist who had died, who I had an appointment with in like three weeks. I was like, well, I am, I am not going to go see him, I guess. Now I have to find a new dermatologist. And I called them, and I was like, yeah, what do you recommend? And they were like, go see this guy. All right, good. That guy was not as good. My first dermatologist was great. Uh, the new guy, it, like if you, if I'm like, hey, and I don't see a dermatologist that often, but I'll be like, this mole looks wrong, and I want you to look at the mole and then spend 40 seconds looking at the mole, and then I want you to turn to me in a very authoritative way, say, that's not anything you need to worry about. That's perfectly normal. I want you to assure me I'm not going to die of skin cancer. I do not want you to at all waffle. I do not want you to be like, well, in my opinion, that's, I don't think you need to worry about that, OK? I don't think you need to worry about that means you need to worry about that. I need certainty. I need this. That is, don't worry about that, Keith. Uh, that's my sleep doctor. My sleep, I just got, an, I just got a letter like, t like three weeks ago. My sleep doctor's retiring. I got to find a new sleep doctor now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My sleep doctor, uh, great sleep doctor, because she, she really doesn't do doctor things. She's really like, well, what can we do to fix you? And I'm like, I don't know. She's like, try this. Uh, it's just past Memorial Day. Uh, Memorial Day is really one of three holidays a year we try and have a party, maybe four. Sometimes we do Fourth of July. Uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day, uh, Halloween. Um, and Memorial Day and Labor Day, uh, I think of as, uh, as a person from Wisconsin, uh, they are the start of summer, end of summer party thing. Because in Wisconsin, it snows starting in like October. I mean, not anymore, not thanks to President Trump. Uh, but used to snow in like late October, and all of Wisconsin would be covered in snow through mid-April. And then it would melt, and then uh, school would end just around Memorial Day, uh, and then everyone would be bratwurst. Uh, and if you're old enough, you drink beer. Uh, I wasn't old enough, so I went to college. Uh, and then you have all summer, and summer's great. Uh, except for near dusk when the skies are filled with mosquitoes. Uh, and then you have all summer, and then you have Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day is really the, the end of summer, because school in Wisconsin never started until after Labor Day uh, for reasons involving the Wisconsin Dells and college students working there. But you, you always got your, your Labor Day party was always the end, and then you had to go back to school like the day later. It was, it was terrible. Well, I like school, so it wasn't terrible. It was still terrible. I mean, you had to go, but I liked it. Um, and so we have carried over uh, for no good reason. Well, the good reason is none of our other friends ever have parties. So we are forced to do all the heavy lifting now. Um, but we, we try to do the Memorial Day party, uh, and then we try to do the Labor Day party. Uh, and try to do the parties largely. I used to stress a lot about them. Uh, and like I'd make lists and try to remember things and cross stuff off and we'd be planning for a week or two beforehand. And now, like two days before the party, I'm like, well, we got to go buy stuff. And then we go to a store and then we buy a stack of bratwurst and a couple stacks of hamburgers and other random food bits uh, and then a bunch of booze. Um, and then the morning of the party, we drag all the stuff over to the clubhouse where the pool is and I set stuff up. And then people show up, uh, and then mostly I start cooking things on the grill, and I manage to say hi to about three people, and then it's six hours later and the party's over. And somehow we have more booze than we started with, because everyone we know brings booze and food, and then we get we have as much food as we started with, not the same food, because most of the bratwurst, a lot of bratwurst got eaten, but now we have like random bags of chips and 
flakes of cookies that are bad for me that I'm still eating in my house because they're delightful. Um, that's parties. Memorial Day. If, if you don't have a Memorial Day party to go to, and if you know me, you can come to mine. And if you don't know me, well, you can't come. Uh, we had Maker Faire. Uh, I went up to Maker Faire. That was like a week and a half ago. Um, I'm still enjoying going to Maker's Fair, uh, although it's there is a weird sameness to it every time. Like I mostly know where things are because it's the same place they were last year. Um, you know, my friend Chris is always doing his spirograph thing outside, and um, again, I I really like the 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 one. Uh, it's not the big room. I call it the big room because it takes me the longest to get through. But I think it's the same size as the other room. Uh, mostly where they have the, the smaller tables with the smaller companies and the people trying to do stuff. Because uh, I just walk around and talk to people. Um, this year, there's still a lot of 3D printers. Uh, I did not buy a 3D printer, so we got that going for me. Uh, but I also still don't have space in my garage for a 3D printer. So I don't know why I think I'm being virtuous by not buying something I don't got any space for. Uh, I, was, I thought it was really cool this year. Uh, like 3D CNC machines are getting cheaper and better. Uh, and I keep thinking I could buy one of those. It's like a 3D printer in reverse. Instead of starting with a box of air and then spitting plastic into it in the shape of what you want, you start with like a box of wood and then you cut away the wood where the stuff you want isn't. Uh, and for some reason, that, that vaguely appeals more to me as something that would be fun to do and useful, although I don't think it is. I just haven't thought long enough about how big of a pain that is or how noisy it would be. Um, uh, and I mentioned, uh, and th there's always the food section. The writer loves the food section. Uh, I like going to the food section um, primarily so that I can, the, the, the beekeeper people always come every year. Uh, and every year uh, I like to go talk to the beekeeper people uh, about their slaves, their bee slaves. Uh, I accuse them in horrible ways of keeping bees as their drone slaves to take over the world or make honey or whatever it is bee people do with their bees. Um, and they, every, it's different people each year mostly, and they are always friendly. And they, I can tell inside they're like, yeah, this guy's a moron. But that's yeah. Uh, and I really, I mentioned Maker Faire only for one thing, uh, which is uh, I have a lab coat, uh, which I purchased, which has a logo of my fake little company on it, so it looks official. Uh, and I wear the lab coat to Maker Faire, because why not? I gotta wear something, uh, and so I wear it. And then I stand around and talk to people. If you are standing somewhere wearing a lab coat, everyone assumes you're the guy that should be there who knows the answers to things. Uh, and on many, many times, I would be standing at someone's table talking to them about the thing they were doing, and a third person would walk up and start asking me how the thing worked. Because I'm the guy in the lab coat. Clearly, I'm the smart one. Uh, and it, it, what I want to tell you people is, uh, first of all, lab coats are magic. So if you need to wear something, just go buy a lab coat. Uh, and secondly, here's, here's the critical thing. When you buy a lab coat, no one checks. No one checks if you're allowed to buy the lab coat that you're buying. They'll just send it to you. Like, I, I have no professional lab coat reasons whatsoever, but I, I just bought one and then I embroidered stuff on it. I didn't embroider it. I had, so, I had someone else embroider it. I had my people do it. Um, and then... Now I can just pose as a smart person and confuse the world. I, I would like just lie to If I was standing next to something, there was no one else there, people would walk up and ask me. I just started lying, just flat out. Uh, there were several eighth graders that I hope get an actual class in physics sometime in high school. Otherwise, they are gonna, they are gonna enter adulthood very confused about a number of things, uh, is my thing. Uh, it's also 
Uh, May is also uh, high school graduation season and college graduation season, I guess. And for some reason, middle school. And when I was in, first of all, I didn't go to middle school. I went to junior high school. We didn't call it middle school because that's what we. Um, I do not recall graduating from elementary school. I think we got to the end of elementary school, and then the teacher would be like, well, bye, all of you. You're in junior high school next year. Hope you live. Uh, and then junior high school, they're like, well, you're in high school next year. Hope you live. You especially, Keith. You are going to need help. <sighs> but now everyone, like, you, like I, I've... I've seen countless pictures of kids' nursery school or preschool graduation. To, first of all, not everyone needs to graduate. You should only graduate, you should graduate from high school, then you should graduate from college, and maybe you graduate from college twice, like with a FUD or a master's or something. Um, I mention this because the other thing about graduations now is my high school graduation was, thankfully, uh, it was not fun. I was not short because everyone had to walk across the stage get handed something um, but it has been forgotten which is whatever everyone said was not recorded and it is not usable later in the future uh, whereas these days high school graduations apparently are streamed live on YouTube and saved forever uh, so I will tell you, first of all, there are a couple valedictorians that later are going to look back on their speech at graduation and think, I should not have said most of those things. Um, uh, and in a couple cases, uh, there were a few schools that really should not be broadcasting what is blatantly not allowed by the Constitution because of the separation of church and state. Uh, we have almost no time left. Um, look, my last page, my last page just says weed update because someone asked me, hey, Keith, you're still in California. Uh, how's that weed thing going? We haven't done a lot. Um, it, I, I kind of hoped it would help me relax some. Occasionally it helps me relax. Not always. Work in progress, people. It's a work in progress. Uh, we're still trying things out. Um, uh, we, we started going to a new store. Uh, and the store, when you go into the store, the first thing you see is they will sell you a tiny pot plant in, a, in, a, in dirt, and you can take it home and grow it. Uh, and every time we go there, I'm like, hey, we should buy one of those, Loretta. And she's like, we just kill plants. It would just die. It would die. That's all the time we have, people. It's been lovely. Uh, see you maybe next month. I don't recall if we're taping in July. I don't recall where the fourth falls. Might, maybe, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, thanks for watching.